All right, folks. Well, welcome back to another episode of Lake, Lake Life. Life. This week's uh, guest was Russ Purdock from where is he from? Adventist South. Adventist South, right? And um, gosh, I don't think I asked what his title was. He's a community. I have his card too. Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's a like a community uh, outreach outreach liaison uh, person. Um, and uh, yeah, so we had him in and uh, kind of discussed, uh, you know, the the goings goings on in, in Lake County, and uh, we're gonna introduce you to him right now. Hello, Lake County residents. Today we are here with Russ Purdock. Russ Purdock is from Adventist Health in Clear Lake, or is it all of Lake County? Adventist Health Clear Lake. Okay, uh, is the name of the hospital. Okay, uh, but we do service uh, all of Lake County, and uh, obviously partnered with other organizations within the Adventist Health umbrella. Gotcha. And so what is your title? What do you what do you do for Adventist Health? Well, I was blessed um, to join the Adventist team. I am the Director of Community Wellbeing, and it's my job to do what I can to improve the health overall of Lake County and uh, Clear Lake. Okay. So where do we stand in that chart right now? I mean, I know we were pretty low on the total poll for health-wise. Have we moved up any in any of those categories? Joyce, that's a great question. The um, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, as you know, um, does those surveys every couple of years. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it takes two to three years before they update yeah. that. So we're always behind in that cycle. But in the last um, in the last cycle, we were 58 out of 58 counties overall. So, so, so we're still 58 on meeting low. dead last? Uh, yes. in, in most, in many, <laughs> in many of the saying? areas, I won't say most of the areas, but okay. in many of the areas, um, Lake County uh, did come in last. Um, and is that so, because of our, our socioeconomic, I mean, basically, you know, where we live? They look at them uh, at a multiple a factors, okay. you know. There's um, a list of factors that they You know, from cancers to accidental death. And suicides. the other thing that, suicides, exactly, Joyce. The other thing that we have to look at is being a smaller county, 56,000, you know, there, give or take. Um, it takes fewer numbers to drive that curve. Mm. So, but on the same note, um, if we can make improvements, the faster we'll climb. The other thing that we look at is zip codes, and zip codes, of course, dictate socioeconomic, as you brought up, right. um, impacts. Um, you know, access to care is, is a big one. We are currently, with the help of uh, Faith Hornby and as Executive Director of Hope Rising, mm -hmm. and uh, a group um, within the Adventist Health Umbrella doing our current uh, CHNA, Community Health Needs Assessment. Okay. We're in the process of beginning that. In fact, we'll be reaching out to focus groups here in the next couple of weeks to uh, have those specific conversations of what people in Lake County want to see um, their health providers bring to Lake County, what they see as, the, as critical um, needs in their community and their families for themselves and as individuals, mm -hmm. um, which is very important. For the last several years, our uh, primary uh, focus has been on homelessness, has been on addiction issues, um, and on uh, cancer rates, reducing uh, cancer and doing better cancer screening, and then access to care. So some of the programs is, we, we may get into uh, here later in this conversation yeah. uh, should point uh, and touch on those. Gotcha. Cancer, is that, I mean, we have a lot of cancer uh, patients, victims here in it, Lake in County. That, in that same study, we, we do score high uh, per capita um, for cancer rates. One of the things that I think we also need to take into account is who makes up our, our population, mm -hmm. and particularly Clear Lake. Um, right. We have to look at the economy, not just within Lake County and within our, our, our boundaries, but you know what influences do we have from outside the county? And as you know, Joyce, a lot of people are coming in, they want to retire here, right. they see Lake County as maybe a little more affordable, mm -hmm. so they leave their neighborhoods, they leave you know family members in the Bay Area or in the Sacramento Valley, and they come to Lake County for it's a beautiful area. I love sure living is. here. Yeah, I love it too. Um, I, I you know I love sunsets and, and sunrises, and it's just it's it's beautiful, and you know, living, they we think uh, is less expensive here. Yeah. Now, after no, fires we're not about that and, now. <laughs> and after other impacts, anybody seen the price that, of fuel lately? Oh my God, that's, that's, that's right. That's right. In fact, I had I had a great conversation in the grocery store yesterday with a gentleman who had just moved here to Lake County. 
And he said, oh my gosh, gas prices are so much higher. I think it's 30% higher, you know, when I hit the grocery store for right. some products. Yeah. And, and it, you know, I trying to make light of it, everything's imported because we have to truck everything in. It's not down just here. Mountain. Down and down in the Bay Area, That's their true, gases are just as yeah. high as stuff. It's, it is. it's just the overall uh, expenses now of um, you know everything goes up. What well one when people don't realize when wages go up, everything goes up. True. So it you really, know they absolutely. fight for these higher wages and everything. But I actually did an analysis of my wages back in the seventies and what I paid out in the seventies compared to my wages now and what I pay out now. I was better off in the seventies making a dollar an hour. By the way, I was like, okay, we could go back to that time because I was better off because everything was just you know gas was way you know we're talking you know less than thirty cents a gallon. You know, well was under like, a dollar. Yeah, you know. So I mean things were just just way different. So, um, so what are what are the things that I see here is like you uh, that Adventist Health has really been working hard with uh, the homeless and um, and working with different organizations to help the um, homeless get out of their addictions. I hope and, and into some things. Yeah. And I know that we have uh, some new programs here. So um, why don't you tell us about how? Let's say somebody wants to get off. You know how they are. It's catch them while you can type thing. And uh, what would be the process for somebody through Adventist Health and, and how would they sure. work to get some help? But if I could, Joyce, I'd like to finish um, answering Thomas's question on the cancer and then yeah. we can jump okay. right into that. So people are coming up here, they're yeah. later in life, maybe they've been um, using tobacco products, you know, chew tobacco right. or smoking, things like that. Yeah. And when it, they're it's retiring not that here- Lake County itself has a correct. high, yeah. It's folks and, and the data moving, and the data yeah. bears that out exactly. And so I want Lake County residents to know that you're not moving up here, and all these people are getting cancer. Right. That's not the case. That people right. are moving with these pre-existing conditions, conditions to Lake County. Is that has a lot to do with because you know now we have the center down here for uh, you know people to get kidney dialysis and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you know I mean we never even thought about that you know not that long ago really. I mean if you think about it, but I noticed that they're really really super busy and stuff. Is that kind of the same scenario? People are moving up here that already have those kind of problems and and uh, because I just can't picture Lake County all of a sudden having to have all of a sudden all these people have yeah. kidney dialysis. And, and, just really as, was, and as we see sick. more medical facilities being built yeah. in our community yeah. and I think like you said it's it's the cost of living yeah. that, that attracts people to you know. So, uh, so people are coming up here. Yeah. We have to look at our social determinants of health and when we look at social determinants of health, we're looking at obesity, we're looking at diabetes rates, we're looking, you know, at, at cardiovascular issues. Right. Um, and all of those obviously impact our community. So at Adventist Health, um, you know, our, our experts in our clinics, our experts in the hospitals, our, our physicians there are looking at, you know, what, what can we better do to serve our community, right? Right. So that's what's prompting and bringing these, these new um, treatments and things. You know, we're, we're really excited and and have been working for the last couple of years with the help of Redbud Healthcare District to bring in a women's and children's health because we know that that mothers that um, the, the dominant female the matron you know matriarch of the family is really kind of the glue that holds a, you know a lot of our our family networks together right. so when they're not healthy it really impacts the kids, the grandkids. They don't have time to stay healthy and take care and of Joyce, themselves. You know, <laughs> Joyce, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Like so so how can we better address that? Right, right. So, you know, we've created, uh, you know, it's kind of a vision of our president CEO, David Santos, to really work on our Live Well Institute mm -hmm. um, and, and how we can better treat to bring people within our clinics to talk about nutrition, yeah. mm -hmm. to talk about how important it is for their you know, anyone sees and, and lowering their blood pressure so we can reduce the, the uh, you know, experience of strokes and things like this. A lot of it's time, um, though. It's, it's time. So let's take a mother who has small children that don't go to school yet. They're not in, in, in preschool or daycare or whatever. They're home people taking care of them. It's really hard for them to actually take away from their time. So I always thought it would be really nice if there was a place where they could go, say the Live Well Center, that had a daycare there so that they can actually come and and do the exercises and learn things without having to worry about their children and not being able to pay for somebody to watch them for them to go take care of themselves. Right, so. and, and also access to care, mm -hmm. again, finding providers, you know, that we can um, hire recruiting is, is, yeah. um, is difficult. I'm not gonna, not going to kid anybody around, and, and it's not just within Adventist Health Clear Lake, yeah. it's within, you know, the medical field 
uh, everywhere. Oh, it takes um, a long time if you're new. We just found that out when my, uh, my kids uh, decided to stay here uh, to get in to a doctor if you're a new patient. It's like two, three months. Right. So, Incredibly I mean, you know, if you have any right. medical needs and you move up here, especially as a senior, I mean, that's, that's a long time. So that's why we're really interested in, in helping people to find a primary care right. physician. And we are bringing in new doctors. In fact, I was working with uh, one of our recruiters yesterday to help bring in a new pediatrician because we need, you know, we yeah, need yeah. that. And also working with uh, Carlton Jacobson, our CFO, we're trying to figure out the right space for an urgent care yeah. because we know that the emergency room at the hospital is not always right. the best fit, right? right? So if we were able to open an, an urgent care with extended hours, mm -hmm. so people can come in without the appointment. Right and be seen when they have that toothache that's okay. really driving them crazy yeah. or an right. earache or you know a fever when you have they an infant. They twisted their ankle. <laughs> right. And, and a mother doesn't want to hear, I'm sorry we don't have, we can't get you in for another week when you have a sick one at home. Well, or, so. or, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just going through the experience I went with with my, with my kids moving up here. Their kids, of course, had to have physicals for school and everything, sure. and it was really an And order. vaccinations. Right. I mean, that's really kind of a hot topic it now. Really, but. Yeah, it's really yeah. an ordeal for, for uh, things. And, and one of the other things I wanted to ask you about are, you know, one of the things that I hear uh, out here is uh, the, the specialty doctors, you know, them having mm -hmm. to go out of town you know, for the specialty doctors is Adventist Health looking into, and I'm sure this is something that has to be planned out fairly well, and I know that that's probably also a pretty good expense, but are they looking into trying to, to get more specialty doctors up absolutely. here? Absolutely. Uh, to, to where they're not having to go over the mountain? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so when we look I, at I orthopedics, have, you know, yeah. when we're looking uh, at, at uh, neonatal care, okay. um, you know, absolutely. So curious, I mean, you guys have a facility it's a rather small hospital. I mean, how many? Mm -hmm. How many? Uh, uh, we are a twenty-five bed critical access hospital. Yeah, I was okay. say, that's, that's, and that's the other thing is this is not a normal hospital yeah. like we think of a hospital, and I think that's right. where uh, people don't understand. And, and most of our patients are flown out of here, right. correct? I mean, for, correct, because yeah. in in the healthcare models, yeah, that that provides critical. the best care. Right. I got you. So and we're, the critical care wasn't it set up because well, one because of funding, and they were you know, years ago when this hospital was kind of closing down. This is how mm -hmm. they kept it open. And isn't and, the critical care more to get you stable and get you to right, a place right. where you need to be to get the care? But the other thing that you know, and, and what a great way to kind of segue in, in mm -hmm. choice. You know, you're right. Um, I was born and raised here. You know, I grew up here. Yeah. I was a couple years old when they started work building the hospital. It was opened, uh, I think, in 1968. Mm -hmm. um, we just had our 50-year uh, celebration in, in uh, 2018. Okay. So, um, and, and it had a terrible reputation mm -hmm. as a community hospital. Yeah, I mean, it still does, and we all know the nickname. We're not going to say the nickname. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, it, it, but it's Thomas, better. thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, that nickname is fading, yeah. and more and more often, I'm, I'm out in community meetings, and just the other day, I had a gentleman come up. He was so grateful for the, ho for the doctors he has, the hospital and the stay they had, and it was just a uh, year before last, you know, we were recognized as one of the top critical access care hospitals in wow. the nation. Okay. So, so um, accolades are coming. So definitely, and, and the quality of service has improved dramatically. You know, our patients um, have, are now coming from around the lake when it used to be, you know, there was that separation. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot more patients in our Lakeport Clinic. Okay. We have a cardio um, doc up there that's seeing patients and, you know, and, and we're able to uh, provide that those brighter, ser broader services. Is there a possibility of a you know projection of a larger hospital being built I mean our community is only growing we can be right. we see this every day you know so uh, and hopefully you know low-cost uh, income housing you know, right. is coming soon which is going to bring another you know so, so in my position we actually started talking about this you know about three years ago that's when I started with Adventist Health about three years ago and um, that conversation is taking place. Well, but when good. you look at the cost of a hospital being yeah. upwards of over two, $200 million. Oh, easily, yeah. You know, yeah not everybody has a Mark Zuckerberg right. hanging out in their neighborhood. So. Well, they don't, they don't <laughs> have that, but there aren't, you know, there aren't a lot of grants available yeah. uh, for that. So we have to really do the data. We have to look at the community and see um, and what it is we can care provide. The unit is one yeah. step um, that helps, that helps uh, service the people. Right. And, and yet not having to enlarge the hospital because yeah. 
I, I really feel that you know our emergency room gets used very inadequately with the community. They tend to go there mainly, like some of the people I know recently have went there, is because they can't get a doctor's appointment. So right. the urgent care unit to me is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is is probably on my high priority list. I feel because of that type of situation is they can't get in for two, three months. I'm sorry, but if you're hurt, you're doing something, you need care. And and so they end, up going to, and they end up going to the emergency room because of that. I think if so, we had an urgent care unit that was open and available, I think they would see that the, the hospital and would. And that's, that's what the data shows. Yeah. So that's why we're trying to get that urgent care yeah. open so people can get in and, and not have to wait for, yeah, for the, wonderful. well, for checkups. Again, we're trying to do a lot more prevention, mm. um, healthcare prevention. So coming yeah, in for the preventative yeah, checks, for right, yeah. um, again, having a uh, primary care physician that is familiar with you and familiar with your family. Um, those are the, the directions we would like to help our, our community go. Mm -hmm. To answer your question again, and I'll kind of wrap it up, um, cancer screening yeah. um, is a priority when we've got people coming in, making sure that you know mammograms are being done, PAPs are being done, uh, colorectal cancer yeah, screening colon being colon done, yeah. colonoscopy being done, um, and that's happening uh, with uh, greater care at, at the Clear Lake Clinic and our, our outlying clinics. and. Hidden Valley, as I mentioned, Lakeport, um, even our, our clinic in Lucerne. Um, again, trying to improve and increase that access to care around the lake uh, is most important. So to answer your question, uh, you're right. And one, one of the things that we really looked um, deep into was what we call high, our high utilizers of our emergency department. And one of the things that we found when we did that dive was the same high utilizers that are hitting our emergency department are the same people that are taking uh, time with our police department, fire taking department. time with our fire department and emergency medical services. Gotcha. Um, Actually, with I just our met behavior. with somebody over that this morning. That's there you go. Say. So, so, and our behavioral health services. Um, by the way, I'll make a little plug. Um, Adventist Health Clear Lake wrote a grant um, for just over $11 million and for a behavioral health integration grant. Oh, great. Um, Dr. Orvin Philman has done a fantastic job of stepping, standing that program up, which should be seeing patients here very soon. Excellent. Um, and we're also in collaboration with Ukiah Valley, uh, Willits, and St. Lena Hospital through that same grant process That's for great. behavioral health. Because behavioral health is a very, it's an issue very in, in big uh, influencer of, yeah. of health. It's, it's, yeah. it's huge. To me, that's like the number one. I mean, because if you think about it, that whether it's just health we're talking about or drugs or alcohol or any of that all affects our health, um, most everything has a bearer on your mental. Somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow, something started, and whether it's depression or you know any of that stuff. I'm a firm believer that we need to really start looking more into the mental capacities of people and helping them understand right. like why are they doing the things that they're doing, right. such as calling 911 all the time to go to the hospital. Most of the time it's because they're lonely and they don't have anybody to talk to and it's a little attention for them and stuff like that. So I mean, I, I know but there, And then right down to do the, that, so. the folks we see on our streets in our right. local community right. and so it doesn't I seem that we have an outreach yet for those those folks. And there, there is, it's there, just, there is. It's just not, Thomas, but yeah, it's just not. Just to, just to address that, because I, I don't like there. to I don't like yeah. to minimize yeah. or, or downplay when someone's struggling with mental health issues. Yeah. It's just as serious as if you're having a coronary. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and they're in distress. And it caused them to have a coronary. Yeah. <laughs> True story. But, but in healthcare, we need to be there, mm -hmm. and we need yeah. to try to, to be able to, to provide those services and support, yes. those support systems, especially when we look at, I don't know if people are, are uh, familiar with ACEs and ACEs scoring, adverse child uh, environmental um, impacts when okay. when you start adding these things up and and I apologize I, I didn't bring my notes with me that's today, okay that's okay but I'm um, just off we the like top that of my shoot, head. shoot from the shoot head from right the head. from the top of the head so, that's usually the honest most honest <laughs> answer as long as when it's not scripted that's so when that's we look at we our like. kids and you look at some of the things that have really been influencing their young lives in the last seven years Valley Fire Mm -hmm. um, all you know, fires. sulfur yeah. fire, yeah. Rocky, all, fire. Rocky yeah. fire, all, all fire. of these. And, and, and I'm and glad then, you mentioned that because there is there is mental health related to these fire victims. And so even the, Thomas, yeah. let, me, let me touch on that. Okay. When we smell smoke, now yeah. thankfully, you know, when we're when we're sh sharing this show and sharing these opinions, we're we're almost in we're in fall. 
Yeah. Um, we're starting to get some rain, Thanks so hopefully fire season will be in right. soon. Yeah. Um, but it was only a few days ago on the calendar. Right. Um, four years ago, we had the sulfur fire. Right. Um, that raged through and, and took out many homes in the city of Clear Lake. But I, I know with my friends, I know when I watch social media, if there's smoke, all of a sudden people are, are trying to find out where is it coming from, right. mm -hmm. where, what's the origin, what's the rate of spread. Yeah. Yeah. They are very tuned oh. in yeah. um, when they see smoke, we smell all smoke. Guilty. <laughs> um, and it's where's my family and mm -hmm. things that prior to that hadn't been an issue. Right. You know, right. Hadn't well, been something we that, took note of. I actually got a call from somebody because I said on city council about somebody by the police department throwing out a cigarette. They call me because they're panicking that's going to start a fire and they're, you know, so it's, it's all those little things that we really never thought about before. So there's this yeah. hypersensitivity. That just kind of mentally has affected all of us. I think we've yeah. all, anybody that's lived here yeah. uh, mentally has been affected for it from all of Absolutely. Stuff, Absolutely. So. You know how I am with sirens. He gets crazy. You know, I, I, yeah. <laughs> he gets a little, he gets it's a little It's awful too because I'll look and I go, oh, it's just an ambulance. Oh, that's awful. Like, because that ambulance is off to, you know, <laughs> to that's someone right. who's yeah, in danger. Little, he gets you know? a little nuts when it comes to the yeah. fires. It could be miles away but, but Thomas you're, you're not unique yeah you're not unique yeah. Yeah. and you know again um, from personal experience you can kind of tell the difference between a, a fire you know siren on, on a truck or an ambulance yeah. versus law enforcement yeah. right um, but we are stressed and that's that's the point so what does stress do it, it ages us it, it you know causes us not to sleep well at night faster please <laughs> um, but we need to take those those into account and what can Absolutely. we do to help our population exactly. um, to deal with these stressors so what does Adventist Health how do they work with um, our, our county mental health department and stuff so do they refer people over to them or do they incorporate something in I'm gonna use that as a segue okay. into some of your other questions that's good. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so trying to segue into that, um, one of the things we realized is we are so much stronger as a community when we collaborate. When we remove the silos that we've been working in, and I think a really good example of that um, came, oh gosh, what was it, about five years ago, four years ago, um, I had the privilege of serving as mayor. And one of the things we had learned at a League of California Cities um, conference is ways to help our homeless population. Um, new and innovative ways that, that I personally hadn't been made aware of, but I sat in the training and thought, this is something I can bring home. So I, I was able to uh, work with the mayor of Lakeport at the time, Stacy Matina, and we wanted to set up a, a meeting with our district attorney and maybe a representative of the courts, our fire uh, chiefs that were available, our law enforcement chiefs that were available, and we began talking about the higher utilizers mm -hmm. that I mentioned earlier and looking at what could we do together so we weren't all dealing with the same individuals individually. How could we pool our resources to help? Because when you're homeless, it's a crime to be in the park, you know, after dark. Right. But if that's where you live, True. you're getting a ticket. Yeah. If, you know, people like to enjoy an adult beverage, yeah. um, if you have those in most, a lot of the parks here in Lake County and, and the cities, you may receive a citation for that. Correct. Yeah. Um, there are crimes that, that people can commit because they're homeless that you wouldn't commit if you were housed. Gotcha. Okay? So, and then and then we have the other things. When you have the, the loss of the family unit, maybe a divorce or a death in the family, something like that, that caused people to have that mental uh, behavioral health break. Right. Um, that may lead to homelessness. We have, you know, we just have many, many factors. Some as simple as they were driving through Lake County and their car quit and they didn't have the money or the means and to get they're help they're stuck and now they're living in their car. Or, and, um, or living in the Walmart parking lot. Correct. So to answer your question, by, by looking at what we can do better, you know, working with law enforcement, looking with fire EMS, identifying the people that we are able to help, um, if we were able, um, and I want to uh, again kind of do a shout out to uh, one of the people I have the privilege of working with, Marilyn Wakefield, um, through some donations we received from, or she received from the Judges Breakfast Group, um, some, some monetary donations she received from um, our Rotary Club of Clear Lake. Okay. Um, they, we all donated and, and she had some money in a, in a, um, a cash fund, oh, cool. okay, like a petty cash fund. Well, with that, we were able to give the, an individual a couple hundred dollars to get his car fixed. Nice. And he could head home. 
you know, when, yeah. when we were able to meet with them. Yeah, there was able a to get, you guys were able to. Exactly. Yeah. Able, you know, having someone tell you, I'd really like to go home, but <laughs> I don't have the means. That's awful. You know, and I live, you know, another, a state away. Wow. Well, let's help you get a train ticket, bus ticket, plane ticket, and we can, we can help get you home as long as home is willing to accept you. Right. So we make those connections. Absolutely. I'd love to see, you know, Johnny come home. So yeah. we help Johnny to get home. That is, that is, so it's through that collaboration. So that collaboration expands out into working with Lake County Behavioral Health, working with the health department, and how can we support one another. Mm -hmm. We have a great working relationship with Sutter Lakeside, um, you know, and we're building those relationships with other uh, entities <coughs> in the county. And through that came a vision of my predecessor, Shelly Trumbo, who saw through some, some work and some, some uh, research that she had done that by bringing these groups together, we can be, you know, much more effective. So that was kind of the birth, and with uh, again David Santos' leadership of Hope Rising, and Hope Rising brings together the county, North Coast opportunities, and through that collaboration, uh, we were able to build Hope Center, uh, which is a model off of our project restoration and restoration house model. Though, so it's, uh, it's a, exists. The, so Hope Rising, which folks uh, you saw in one of our earlier episodes, uh, we visited Hope Rising, met with uh, Justin Gaddy, we met mm -hmm. with um, Faith, Faith Hornby, Hornby. Mm -hmm. um, we met with Pastor Shannon, amazing Correct. woman, mm -hmm. and so restoration house. Tell this is something new. This is a new word. You know, we haven't heard. I think we talked, maybe we, we spoke yeah, up, but we didn't really go into detail hope, over it. Yeah, but we heard else. about it, Restoration House. Right. Tell so, us about this. So through the work and the research that Shelley had, had done and meeting with an amazing group of people um, through Camden, New Jersey, called the Camden Coalition, um, who came out here, who spent time with us, and who looked at and shared with us um, best methods, best, best practices in dealing with a community population like we have here in Clear Lake and in Lake County. Mm -hmm. We identify 16 domains of care. So when someone comes in and they need help, um, we can walk them through an interview process, uh, an intake process, uh, and, and identify what do they need to help them get stabilized, find housing, right. to, to get you know, some normalcy back in their life after being homeless. Because the best medicine for homelessness is housing. So housing for homeless Folks, that's that's a, I mean that's a goal for Restoration House. Well, okay, so Restoration House again was a vision of Shelley Trumbo, David Santos, um, and and a group of, of like-minded local professionals mm -hmm. who saw um, saw that need. And remember, we were talking about high utilizers, mm -hmm. people who are coming through the emergency department. They're being seen for the same thing over and over, over and over again. again yeah. Where our inpatient days and stays in the hospital. Um, or were excessive mm -hmm. but we when you have someone who has come in off the street who may have some significant injuries in some cases been hit by a car have a broken leg or in you know significant injury that requires surgery right. well after surgery the last thing we want to do is discharge to the street gotcha. so through a grant from Adventist Health um, of three hundred thousand dollars we were able to find a property and um, open what we call Restoration House. <coughs> Restoration House is a 10-bed facility that provides and utilizes those 16 domains of care. It's a higher barrier mm -hmm. because uh, people that need that type of care typically are higher high utilizers right. who have medical needs and that we can offer support for those medical needs. Now they also need to be ambulatory so they can help them, you know, self themselves and, and uh, move around because we just don't have the, the full-time staff capacity yet to to provide that extra care. Gotcha. Um, those people needing extra care, we look for uh, skilled nursing facilities um, that can provide them that until they're stabilized to the point that they are ambulatory, and then we can welcome them into Restoration House. Yeah. So, and then Restoration House is funded by Adventist Health Clear Lake. Um, as people take that journey, you know, in their health needs um, to get stronger, more stable, and then we work with them to get housing and find permanent supportive housing for so, them. So after this, you know, they go through this uh, process of, of healing, rehabilitation, basically. I mean, absolutely, that's what they're doing. That's exactly what it uh, is. They're not just kicked to the street. They're given, you know, we're going to try and help you find you know, some sort of uh, stable absolutely. environment for you to, to. Well, the whole program is set up because I was 
involved in this when it first started coming about, is set up to make sure that when they leave the house, they are going in to a home and that they can function in society right. and be productive citizens. I mean, that's the whole goal of the program. And, and You're not going to kick them out. And, right. know, and we've housed uh, many uh, adults that have been uh, that have been in that process. But, you know, on the other side, we have to recognize that many of these individuals, they're adults, mm -hmm. and we're catching them downstream at the, at the end of their lives. And we've had um, over five who have passed. They were welcomed into Restoration House, um, reconnected with family or their support groups, and given the dignity to pass um, with those that, that love them. One individual who um, became very close didn't have that network. wasn't you know outside of our uh, outside of the care umbrella, mm -hmm. and with help from Lake County Hospice um, and uh, financial support from the hospital, we were out allowed to let him pass their restoration house. Um, again, with yeah. dignity yeah. and the support that he needed in those last days of his life, bringing hospice in. Yes. Of course. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Because one of the problems Correct. I see with people that have been homeless, and especially if they have, a, you know, a, which almost everybody that's not a homeless, most of them have some kind of mental, you know, issues, <coughs> comes drinking and drugs and all that stuff, and some of the families have literally do what you have to do, and that's really just cut them off. Mm -hmm. So getting them reconnected sometimes can be pretty hard because they want to see this big improvement with these with with them, and sometimes they can't make those big improvements without some kind of a good well, base support so it's good that they have this facility that can give them that support that they may right. not be able to get from family and friends right and when we, we when we have individuals who would like to go <coughs> um, to restoration house and they fit all the all the check boxes right mm -hmm. but they're currently needing to um they're under the influence and they and they need to uh to detox gotcha. Um, we try to help get them into a facility where they're able to do that medical detox um, or through a social detox program, whatever their preference is. Gotcha. And we're also working with Sierra Health and Wellness Group to try to come into Lake County because there is such a need in Lake County and we don't have that medical detox right. option. Gotcha. And you say and finding bed space for a such, medical such detox. A, <laughs> such a need in Lake County. So, uh, I mean, a lot of us... Uh, this is probably like invisible to a lot of us, but there is a serious opioid crisis mm -hmm. here in Lake County. I mean, it, just as, Lake County. I, I know it's, it's not just here in Lake County, it's the whole, the whole, um, you know, and your group at Venice Health is actively trying to um, help people with, with these oh, addictions. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you guys have programs in place, you have so one of the things that we started, um, and then it, and it was all part of the Hope Rising um, project. When Hope Rising was, was beginning, the Safe RX program was housed uh, within our Department of Community Well-Being. What is it called again? Safe, Safe RX. RX. Safe, so, so, safe, so like Safe Prescription, Safe correct, RX. Okay. Correct. Thanks yeah. for clarifying well, that, yeah. Thomas. <laughs> um, where we w met with doctors, mm -hmm. um, talked to them about prescriptions that they were writing, um, looked at other alternatives other than uh, prescribing opioids, um, be it physical therapy and things. That's when um, the laws were beginning to tighten down on opioid prescriptions. Okay. And then looking at what we could do to stand up a program that would help people with opioid addictions. Gotcha. So we've written several grants, um, medically assisted treatment grant to name one, uh, substance use navigation is a program we have both at the Clear Lake Clinic and through the emergency department. Um, that have been really helping people to meet that need when they are ready for help. Gotcha. Because you can't ask somebody or tell someone you need help, you have an addiction, mm -hmm. until they're ready for the help. So uh, one of our viewers out there, you know, or you know, a viewer's parents, and uh, they're curious, they're hearing like, oh wow, there's an avenue for this. Can you tell us like, you know, wh who do we contact? Is there, is there contact information? Or where, do, where, do, where, do, where would someone go? Uh, if you know they, they are seeking you know like you're saying you know to, to get I want to get sober I want to get off of this right. I'm done with this nightmare you know so my suggestion would be to, to contact either the hospital um, and those numbers are listed in the in the uh, uh, directories right. either the hospital or our clearly clinic and ask to speak to a substance use navigator a substance and, use navigator okay and either we have two and either one of them they'll be, will be able to help get into care maybe put their numbers up when yeah 
So I've just provided um, Joyce with the card, okay. my last card, okay. for our substance use navigator, okay. Tina okay. Allen. Okay. So I can't read off the number to That's you right okay. now. That's okay. We will, we'll you can post, edit we'll this out. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll post it on our, uh, uh, we'll post it. Oh, this is kickback. So we can have that number for you on the screen. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thank you, Thomas. And I, th I think, you know, that's one of the one of the things that I think uh, for me, you know, we've talked about this before is the detox centers. Um, you you can't, uh, it's, it's hard to, you can't force the people to do these, but my, my biggest thing is, is I feel we need it the 24 hour, anytime, seven days a week, because when you get somebody who says, I need I'm help, ready. you've yeah. got to get them there right it, then and there. It's in the moment, and yes. There's, and there's that's what our still, substance use navigators yeah. are for, yeah. Yeah. and they do a but, wonderful job. But yeah. I feel we moment. need a facility, okay. you know, a facility where they And I think, can Joyce, this yeah. is a conversation that needs to be had yeah. across. Uh, it does, you know? it really yeah. does. So and at city council level, at, at the yeah. board of supervisors yeah. level, exactly, everyone needs to recognize, and I believe that they do. And uh, but well, I think it also, but also, also to try to encourage someone to come in and help facilitate that. Well, I know years ago, alignment. I don't know if you've been here, so the Aries House um, mm -hmm. that was on Old Highway 53 for it was the AANA. Mm -hmm. it, it was 24 hours, there was somebody there 24 hours a day. And, you know, I used to go in there and volunteer, and I think that was a, a sh shows me that that works. Because you, you know, when somebody comes in off the streets and they're just like, they're frustrated, they don't know what to do, they don't know where to go, they had some place to be directed to, and, and there was somebody there 24 hours a day to help them, you know, get through, you know, and, and get them mental health if they needed to and stuff. It was a little harder process back then because we didn't have all the facilities we have now. Right. But with all these facilities that we have now, I still feel like there has to be a 24-hour walk-in place, and I'm sorry, the emergency room isn't going to be where most people are yeah, going to go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, a lot of them do hours. end up at the yeah. emergency room. Right? Well, they do. Um, they not do, not intentionally, that's, but that's right. when they're seeking help. Yeah. Um, that's or, in, or, in our community. Um, the, that's a 24-hour. In their case scenario, hour, a, right. an OD. Um, you know, and that's where and obviously, you know, obviously yeah. that that yeah. is a trigger. I, I, wanna, I hear I now that our most all of our paramedics, our police officers, and some of our citizens now carry Narcan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me get to that. I have okay. one. <laughs> my car. <laughs> okay. Get to that because that was also part of the Safe RX and the Safe RX is, is continuing that training. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to, to mention is addiction is something that is impacting our community, but not just our community, every community. Every community. Yeah. Every family, yeah. you know, every group of friends yeah. knows someone who has a significant addiction issue, yeah. whether it be alcohol, even now, marijuana, right. obviously mm -hmm. opioids, um, stimulants. Some kind of a, addictions. Something. Everybody has yeah. an right. addiction, yeah. you know. But, but there are ways to get help. Right. If you're ready, you have an addiction, or you have a loved one who comes to you and says, you know, I, I need to quit. I'm, I'm ready to quit. Please reach out. Please uh, contact one of our substance use navigators. You got it. And, 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 and they're very good, by the way, because I have used them <laughs> on a holiday, because I always get people to come to me at nighttime, holiday, and a weekend. And, and Russ promised me that they would answer the phone, and they absolutely did. They do. You know, so they, that, they, that was great. Uh, they so to have Joyce there. say yeah. that, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very pleased, but I, I'm not at all surprised. Yeah. No, um, they're, they're very good about trying to do their very best. I hate to say the 800 numbers that they have publicized on TV and everything are pretty useless. Right. Uh, they might as well not even have those. I think. But again, look. Of remember, money. if you didn't write but down, maybe we can run that number across the screen yeah, again, absolutely. Thomas. Yeah, We're going to put that um, for, for our, our substance use navigation program. Reach out if, if anybody you know, uh, you know, reach out. You know, don't be shy. Like yeah. your but, life, uh, your life is important as anyone's, and so. But another program that we're doing, and, and I, I don't want to let that this pass by, because yeah. um, you brought up a great point, Thomas, is our Narcan yeah. uh, program. Yeah. And when I say our, I'm looking at the o overall arching umbrella of Hope Rising. Hope Rising has been instrumental in going out and providing the Narcan training right. and also um, Narcan kits. Okay. Narcan kits are available to anyone for free. Um, we are able to provide them because of a grant that allows us to provide um, two doses of Narcan in each kit. Okay. And then through Adventist Health, and I believe Sutter may also have the same type of program, we have a card with, a, with locations, pharmacies, that will provide you those, those two doses should you use them. Okay. 
Okay. Um, you can get refills. Okay. So you get refills from the card to go in the kit that you'll receive from Safe RX. Okay. And, and everybody should have these because, you know, especially like, I mean, I deal with a lot of the seniors, and, you know, and I really feel that like everybody should have these because seniors tend to sometimes, you know, overdose and they don't even know necessarily that they have. Right. And so I really feel that. You know, people with any family members, you know, you're out there. I, I just feel like these are. This is a is, is something so that it's can a life save. Saving, yeah. It is absolutely yeah. a life saving thing. Yeah. Some of our police officers have saved several people by so using just, this. I just want to throw a little corrective infor bit of information out there. The Narcan is a bridge mm -hmm. to stop the effects of the opioid Opioids. and okay. opioid only. Okay. To get someone to medical treatment. Gotcha. Unfortunately, it's not a cure. Not at all. Yeah. So unfortunately, someone may be uh, may receive a dose of Narcan. Mm -hmm. They begin to revive and come back from that opioid overdose. Now they need to be. But seen they will by be go, They will go back into overdose within right. a few minutes okay. if that's not. Right. right. So okay. they need to. They need, they to, need to seek, seek medical. medical they need to seek yeah. medical help okay. um, right away if they're using that Narcan. You now the Narcan, Narcan training. You need to call nine one one, right? Correct. So, <laughs> so the Narcan yeah. training. Narcan and nine one one. Exactly, all Thomas. Right. So um, the Narcan uh, training takes about five minutes. It's not very involved. Uh, Narcan for any substances other than opioids is inert. So if a pet gets a yeah. hold of it or you okay. mistakenly administer it thinking it's your sinus spray, mm -hmm. um, not gonna hurt you. Okay. Um, but it does interrupt the impacts and effects oh, of okay. an opioid overdose. See, I'm so naive, like, so uh, <laughs> we're thinking of this uh, and I, probably a lot of our viewers have seen the movie Pulp Fiction and the guy's over OT on the thing and he's stabbing him in the heart with this. It's not like that. That is not what this is. This is a so, nasal spray. Correct. That is used, and um, I mean, I guess uh, one one sh shot. One shot. Yeah. Uh, okay. into, into the nostril, and you hope uh, only one. Sometimes you, two. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes two. That's why and they have two in the pack. Because right. sometimes if they're bad. Like Russ to. said, you administer Narcan. You also call nine one one. And that might be something that we could do a, a video training on. Exactly. So in, the, use, in the future. Uh, yeah. But also, people need to be aware that we have fentanyl that has come in, oh, in yes. into Lake yeah. County. We okay. obviously have <coughs> fentanyl um, that has been introduced into the state. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a horrifying video of um, a young deputy sheriff in San Diego. Right. And he, um, just, and he, had he, yeah, he just came in contact he with just it. Just had barely come into yeah. contact. And I think they used four or five Narcan. Oh doses that is, that is to try to get into the hospital because yeah. he had, had ingested um, that kind of quantity so I also understand of fentanyl. that the uh, needle exchange, which is also a program that's here in Lake County, are giving tests out for, or somebody had told me they were giving tests out for the fentanyl to make sure that their drug is not thing. Yeah, I, I, I had heard the are. same thing, but, heard it, but I didn't right, it, it's not something that I'm personally familiar yeah. with, so I don't feel comfortable okay. commenting so on it. So I didn't know, so I figured I'd ask the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we we do know that fentanyl ha is in Lake County, and okay. so... Very know, dangerous and, drug, folks. Very yeah, dangerous. Do not, you know, take this lightly. Um, people and are Joyce, dying, you know. And Joyce mentioned something that I'd also like to expand on. It was a, it was a great point. Um, our seniors are oftentimes uh, prescribed opioids. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we're looking at fentanyl patches, depending on uh, if you have a cancer, you're going through chemo or something like that. Okay. Um, so it, there's a purpose for this drug as well, I mean, besides... Well, it, it, yeah. There is a medical purpose, but okay. it's through a doctor's care and gotcha. prescription. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, but people can also overdose um, from these fentanyl patches. Yeah. It is something that people do seek. That, that have you know have those addictions. Okay. Um, so again, okay. the the Narcan kit is very effective uh, in those cases, and in some cases, uh, you know, when people struggle with cancer, they're struggling with um, those treatments. Um, your mind isn't clear, and sometimes they misadminister the medication. Oh, the chemo fog. Exactly. It's okay. the chemo that's fog, right. and that's why I say every household, uh, especially if they're taking medications like that. Um, should definitely have these on hand because if they don't have, uh, you know, just sometimes they just don't think, it's, especially the right. older they get, just the older that we get, the more memory we tend to lose. But and, I really want and, to take uh, away the it. stigma yeah. of having one of those kits because oh, yeah. older gentleman who, who's in cancer treatment, um, we offered a kit and he did, I'm not an addict, I don't need that. And it's not, we're not at all yeah, that's how we're it's, it's insinuating or anything of the for sort. Emergency cases, it's for emergency uh, cases. Everything, and, yeah. and just so whenever know. there's opioids around or a person, you should, they, have, one of these you should have one of those kits. All right. So, so wrap, wrapping up this uh, interview with uh, Russ from Adventist Health, 
um, again, per, what is it called again? Prescription or RX? Safe, Safe RX. Safe RX. Safe RX. Right. Under the Hope Rising Lake County okay. um, team is the one that provide it. provides it. Okay. And we're going to put some numbers up for you folks to, uh, to reach out for um, uh, any you know, sort of drug addiction. Maybe you want to get involved in this Narcan um, program that's going on. Hey, you know. And if somebody needs to go to the hospital for help, they can. They can. Absolutely. Yeah, the uh, Adventist Health is there for you. And um, Russ, thanks for coming in and, and you know, enlightening us on our community and our Thomas, local it community. It was a pleasure. Anytime. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And maybe anybody can hook up with a, a training a training on the NAR, uh, on this uh, safe rx and the narcan yeah. and all that stuff and Maybe you can, can get it at your local pharmacies correct and so i imagine they as well provide training for this so uh, if anyone is interested um local pharmacies your probably local fire department because i heard i believe our fire chief willie spetta talking about uh, something so know, along yeah, those lines. The, yeah the fire department also carries narcan that okay. they can administer obviously in an emergency medical situation correct um i don't know that they're allowed to give it to the public Gotcha. Okay. Where where we they're, are? They're, yeah, yeah, they're kind of strict on that. I, right. think I, I would imagine so. I, I think it's a policy, but they may be working through that. But we'll just say right. if anybody wants to, to get training, they can contact. Uh, um, like, like I said, the best the best medicine is if you know someone who is an opioid user, um, or if you have those prescriptions in your home, please have an Arcan kit ready, as Joyce pointed out. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, folks, and um, till next time. Thank you. Welcome back, folks. That was a great interview. Russ, what a you know informative guy. I mean, I, he told us things uh, that that are going on, you know, in Lake County that that to me are just eye opening. And we didn't really even get to a lot of the stuff that yeah, we uh, barely touched that he, the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. Adventist yeah. South has been doing a lot of work in Lake County. Uh, they have, I, uh, I think, people probably have started realizing that they have more clinics around. Right. Um, and I think one of the things they're they're trying to do is uh, get us an, uh, a better urgent care unit because it is really hard to get, especially if you're a new patient into Adventist Health, it takes a long time to get in. Right. And so the urgent care finding unit. Finding a doctor so, for your needs. Yeah, they kind of have a semi-urgent care unit up here, but I think they're going to really start working on a really good urgent care uh, unit, but they're really expanding. And their, uh, and their uh, opioid program. Yeah. Um, is is um, they're working on still needs a lot of work but they're at least they started something you know right. which we desperately needed here um, a- absolutely yeah. need, so yeah. so if and, there and are I, people that one thing that we need to make sure that people realize is is you notice that you know if you need help there it's out there now yeah. uh, you know you can go to the There's hospital and you can go to the you. yeah you know Adventist Health they have a Suboxone program there and you know you can get help now for that uh, so uh, they're they're really expanding here. So. Yeah, and like for me, the informative one of the most informative things was um, the the Narcan um, and how you know they're reaching out to um, the community to get qualified. You know, don't be you know afraid to carry around um, one of these kits. Um, it it could be someone that you know. You can uh, save a life. You can by, save a uh, life. Yeah. That they have saved many lives by since that's come out from the uh, Safe RX is what it's called program. Right. Safe RX and program. Uh, I actually was involved in getting that started here, and I, I uh, you know, it's, it's literally a, a two minute training. It it's, doesn't take long to get trained. Uh, right. You can pretty much pick them up anywhere. I think he said the pharmacies are even uh, have them. Exactly. Uh, but you know, if you uh, you know, I carry one in my car because you have no idea where you're going to come across. And I mean, and it's, it's not just the, when we think of the stigmatism, okay, you know, oh, they're drug addicts. Um, not no. the case, folks. No. I mean, people use opioids, believe it or not, to manage pain. Our seniors and, mm-hmm. um, you know, no fault of their own could, you know, potentially right. OD. I mean, this well, accidents happen. And so. Just think about, especially the seniors, which, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, uh, just like me, I'm going to ha- require all my seniors to, or all my meals and wheels drivers to uh, uh, carry get one and get carry qualified one. to yeah. carry one. Uh, because I was just dealing with a senior that came home from the acute care facility and um, kind of had his medications. He thought he had them in order, right. but they weren't. And, and that can be very dangerous, and some of them were opioids. So yeah. it could be just be an accident. It doesn't yeah, necessarily you know, mean that it's a confused a, senior. Yeah. Or, you know, um, yeah. it happens. And or so. you f- just forget when you're when you're sick and you're hurting. You tend to forget. 
There you, you know, go. so I yeah. think everybody should have one of those kits. Um, you could be in the public, you can be at an event, you have no idea where that may come in. And we hope you never have to use it. Exactly. That it's is good to always be qualified good to and, be qualified yeah. for. And, so you know, able to, a, there it is, you know, save a life. So. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the best program, I think, that we started here in Lake County was, was yeah. the Safe RX. I think that's a great program. Yeah, that is a great yeah, program. So. But I, I want to have him back to, I think we get more specific because at Venice Health is doing so much. So much. That we need to start having, yeah. like, just really. Amazing uh, to know that, you know, uh, one of our prior episodes, Hope Rising, how involved they are mm -hmm. um, with, with Hope Rising. Um, uh, yeah, great. You know, at Venice Health yeah. is really stepping yeah. up in no, our community. We really are. appreciate so. the, yeah. Um, so, well, thanks for joining us for another episode. Don't forget to like, like and share and submit or, or subscribe. Su su subscribe. Yes, there we go. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, so this the next episode um, that, that's coming up, we uh, was more or less another um, field trip. It's um, um, a great new segment called Hot Ones. Um, our local uh, celebrities, or I should say, local dignitaries. We got fire chief. We've from Lakeport. We've got the police chief uh, White from um, Clear Lake here. We've got uh, supervisors Bruno Sabatier, Tina Scott. We've got Sheriff Bill Martin. We've got the uh, Mark Borgier. I'm so horrible with his name. <laughs> the, Kelsey, the owner of Kelsey Lumber. So sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, and uh, Brock Falkenberg, we've got Moak Simon, another supervisor. Uh, folks, so stay tuned. Um, join us for that next ex episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. It was a, a shot on location. It will be a part of our um, Lake Life series. Um, Joyce and I didn't do an actual sit down. There was too many contestants, but uh, we went on location and filmed it. Had a great time, and we look forward to seeing you at that episode. Don't forget to like and... and Submit or uh, subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> she wants hey, your submission. So yeah, if you so have something to submit, well, you know our email address, lcptv at hotmail.com. Send and us all your suggestions on uh, programs that you'd like to see. Exactly. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you.